Hello everyone and welcome to Reading with Mrs. Adams. I'm Mrs. Adams and today I have four books and two poems all about weather, specifically wind and clouds. The first book I'm reading is called Feel the Wind. This is written and illustrated by Arthur Doros and it's a Let's Read and Find Out Science Stage 2 book. That means it's informational text and loaded with a lot of fun facts about wind. I hope you enjoy Feel the Wind. Let's read and find out science. Stage 2. Feel the Wind. Written and illustrated by Arthur Doros. Let's read and find out science. Stage 2. Feel the Wind. Written and illustrated by Arthur Doros. HarperCollins Publishers. For Sandra, feel the wind. Have you ever felt the wind blowing through your hair? Wind is moving air. Air is what we breathe. It is everywhere around us, even though we can't see it. We can't see air, and we can't really see the wind. But we can see the wind move things. Wind pushes clouds across the sky. Wind flutters the leaves of trees and makes ripples on lakes. You can hear the wind too. When the wind blows through cracks in your house, it can sound like someone whistling. If the wind blows very hard, it can sound like a wild animal howling. You can see the wind move things, you can hear the wind, and you can feel the wind too. Stand by an open window and let the breeze tickle your face. A strong gust or a light breeze, wind is moving air. But what makes air move? You can make air move with a fan or by flapping a piece of cloth or paper. But fans don't make the wind. What makes the wind that blows across fields and forests and mountains? What makes the wind that whips around tall buildings in the city? All of the earth is surrounded by air. Earth and the air around it are heated by the sun. But some parts of the earth heat up more than other parts. In the tropical parts of earth near the equator, the sun's rays strike the earth directly. The air gets very hot. Near the Earth's icy poles, the sun rays strike at a slant, so the air stays cooler. When hot air and cold air change places, wind is made. This is the North Pole, the South Pole, and the equator that runs right across the middle of the Earth. Hot air is lighter than cold air, so hot air rises. People discovered this a long time ago and used hot air to make balloons float. The heated air in the balloons was lighter than the cooler air outside. The hot, light air made the balloons float upward. When heated air over the earth rises, cooler, heavier air rushes in to take its place. The moving air is wind. This is warm air as it rises. The cold air comes down to take its place. And that's what causes the wind. The sun's rays strike the equator directly. That's why it gets hotter there. But some things get hotter than others because of what they are made of. You can discover this for yourself. Feel the sidewalk on a hot day. It is probably warmer than the grass beside it. The air above it is warmer too. You might see shimmering heat waves as the hot air rises above the sidewalk. Like the sidewalk, the grass, land, and water heat up differently too. On sunny summer days, the land gets warmer than the water. The air over the land also gets warmer. The warm air rises and cool winds blow in from the sea.
Some winds blow gently, others blow fast. You can see how fast the winds are blowing by watching how things around you move. A gentle wind makes leaves dance. A stronger wind might flap the clothes on a line. A very strong wind can make even heavy trees bend and sway. Storms like hurricanes bring the strongest winds of all. Storm winds may blow very fast, more than 100 miles an hour. That's about twice as fast as cars go on the highway. These winds are strong enough to knock trees down. You can see how strong the wind is by doing an experiment. With a bicycle, stand so that the wind is blowing in your face. Now ride into the wind. Feel how hard it is to pedal. Then turn your bicycle around and ride with the wind, pushing you along. Isn't it easier to pedal now? The wind can carry your kite toward the clouds or lift a glider. Some birds can soar on the wind without moving their wings. Sailboats are pushed along by the wind blowing against their sails. People have used the power of moving air for thousands of years. Windmills are wind-powered machines. The blades of a windmill turn when the wind pushes against them. The turning blades move other parts to lift water, grind grain, saw wood, or make electricity. Wind brings changes in the weather. Rainstorms blow in with the wind and out again as the wind pushes the clouds along. Weather forecasters want to know where the wind is coming from so they can see what weather will be blown in with it. We name winds according to the direction they come from. A west wind blows from the west. There are east winds, north winds, and south winds. So the forecaster is saying, this cold air will be coming in with winds from the northwest. It will bring some rain showers. In some parts of the world, people have given special names to the wind that blows there. A Chinook is a wind that blows from the Rocky Mountains of the United States. A Chinook is so warm that in winter it can melt deep snow in just a few hours. A Sirocco is a hot, dry wind that blows from northern Africa. Wind is moving air. All around us the wind is at work. It carries the seeds of plants to new places where they can take root and grow. But powerful winds can also carry away the soil plants need. Wind can even change the strongest rocks. Bits of sand that the wind carries pound at the rocks and wear them away. The wearing away is called erosion. Some wind eroded rocks have strange shapes. Trees are shaped by the wind, and so are sand dunes. The wind blows gently. The wind blows strong. See it, hear it, feel the wind. You can figure out which way the wind is blowing by watching a leaf, a piece of cloth or string, or a weather vane. The weather vane's arrow will point in the direction the wind is coming from. And that is the end of Let's Read and Find Out Science. Feel the Wind, written and illustrated by Arthur Doros. The first poem I'm reading is called Wind by Aileen Fisher. Wind by Aileen Fisher. The wind has lots of noises. It sniffs, it puffs, it whines. It rumbles like an ocean through junipers and pines. It whispers in the windows. It howls, it sings, it hums. It tells you very plainly every time it comes. 
The next book I'm reading, boys and girls, is called Hilberto and the Wind. It's written and illustrated by Marie Hall Etz. It's a delightful story about a little boy named Hilberto who loves to play with the wind. And he tells us all of the things he loves to do with the wind. I know you'll enjoy Hilberto and the Wind. Hilberto and the Wind by Marie Hall Etz. Hilberto and the Wind. Hilberto and the Wind by Marie Hall Etz, Puffin Books. I am Hilberto, and this is the story of me and the wind. My thanks to Hilberto and his mother, and to Pepe too, for helping me make this book. I hear the wind whispering at the door. You, hoo, hoo, he whispers. You, hoo, hoo, hoo. So I get my balloon and I run out to play. At first, the wind is gentle and just floats my balloon around in the air. But then with a jerk, he grabs it away and carries it up to the top of a tree. Wind, oh wind, I say, blow it back to me, please. But he won't. He just laughs and whispers, you. Wind loves to play with the wash on the line. He blows the pillow slips into balloons and shakes the sheets and twists the apron strings. And he pulls out all the clothespins that he can. Then he tries on the clothes, though he knows they're too small. And Wynne loves umbrellas. Once when I took one out in the rain, he tried to take it away from me. And when he couldn't, he broke it. If the gate in the pasture is left unlatched, wind plays with that too. He opens it up, then bangs it shut, making a squeak and a cry. Wind, oh wind, I say, and I go and climb on. Give me a ride. But with me on it, the gate is too heavy. Wind can't move it at all. When the grass is tall in the meadow, Wind and I like to race. Wind runs ahead, then comes back and starts over. But he always wins because he just runs over the top of the grass and I have to run through it and touch the ground with my feet. When the big boys on the hill have kites to fly, wind helps them out. Wind carries their kites way up to the sky and all around. But when I have a kite, Wind won't fly it at all. He just drops it. Wind, oh wind, I say, I don't like you today. When the apples are ripe in the fall, I run with wind to the pasture and wait under the trees. And wind always blows one down for me. And when I have a boat with a paper sail, Wynne comes and sails it for me, just as he sails big sailboats for sailors on the sea. And when I have a pinwheel, Wynne comes and plays too. First I blow it myself to show him how. Then I hold it out or hold it up 
and when blows it for me. And when he blows it, he turns it so fast that it whistles and sings, and all I can see is a blur. Wind likes my soap bubbles best of all. He can't make the bubbles. I have to do that. But he carries them way up into the air for the sun to color. Then he blows some back and makes me laugh when they burst in my eyes or on the back of my hand. When the leaves have fallen off the trees, I like to sweep them into a pile, but then wind comes along. And just to show that he can sweep without a broom, wind scatters the leaves all about again, and he blows the dirt in my face. Sometimes wind is so strong, he starts breaking the trees and knocking down fences. Then I'm afraid. I run in the house and lock the door. And when wind comes howling after me and tries to squeeze in through the keyhole, I tell him, no. But then comes a day when wind is all tired out. Wind, I whisper. Oh, wind, where are you? Shh, 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 answers wind and he stirs one dry leaf to show where he is. So I lie down beside him, and we both go to sleep under the willow tree. And that is the end of Gilberto and the Wind by Marie Hall Etz. I hope you enjoyed the two books and the poem about wind. Now I have two books and a poem about clouds. The first book is called Clouds. It's written by Anne Rockwell and illustrated by Frené Lessig. It's a Let's Read and Find Out Science Stage 1 book. Anne Rockwell does a beautiful job of simply explaining fun and interesting facts about clouds. I hope you enjoy Clouds. Let's Read and Find Out Science Stage 1. Clouds by Anne Rockwell, illustrated by Frené Lessig. Let's Read and Find Out Science, Stage 1, Clouds, by Anne Rockwell, illustrated by Frané Lessig, Collins, an imprint of Harper Collins Publishers. Look up at the sky. Do you see white or gray shapes moving across it? Those are clouds. Most clouds are too far away to feel. You can only look at them. But there's one kind of cloud you can feel standing on the ground. That is fog. It's the lowest kind of cloud. You can learn a lot from looking at clouds. The shape of clouds and whether they are dark or bright can tell you how high they are and what kind of weather they will bring. All clouds are made of water and particles of dust too small to see. The highest clouds are six to nine kilometers up in the sky. That is three to four miles high. It's so cold up there that all the water in those clouds freezes and becomes tiny crystals of ice. There are three kinds of clouds high up in the atmosphere. Cirrus clouds, cirrostratus clouds, and cirrocumulus clouds. The beginning of a cloud's name tells how high up it is. The next part tells what shape it is. Cirrus, cirrostratus, cirrocumulus. Cirrus clouds are hardly there. They look like wispy white feathers trailing across blue sky. 
They mean sunny weather with no rain. They are far apart and let the sun shine on the earth. Cirrostratus clouds can cover the whole sky. They tell us that it may rain or snow in 12 to 24 hours. Stratus means clouds that are flat and spread out like a blanket. Small, puffy white clouds scattered across the entire sky are cumulus clouds. Cumulus means that a cloud is rounded instead of flat. Cirrocumulus clouds can mean it's going to get colder. Clouds in the middle layer of Earth's atmosphere are two to six kilometers about one to four miles away. There are two kinds, alto stratus and alto cumulus clouds. Many alto stratus and alto cumulus clouds are part water and part ice. Only some of the water freezes in these middle clouds because the atmosphere closer to Earth is warmer. Alto stratus, alto cumulus. Alto stratus clouds are gray-blue and streaky and cover the sky. They tell you it could rain that night or the next day. Alto cumulus clouds look like ocean waves, puffy, white, and gray. If you see them on hot, humid days, a thunderstorm will probably come. Low clouds are only about 3.2 kilometers, two miles above Earth. They are called cumulus, stratus, stratocumulus, nimbostratus, and cumulonimbus clouds. Cumulus clouds look like white fluffs of cotton. They may pile up high like mountains in the sky. They are most often seen on bright sunny days. Cumulus, stratus, stratocumulus, nimbostratus, and cumulonimbus. Stratus clouds are gray and cover the whole sky. They usually mean rain, but not much. Stratocumulus clouds are gray and look like a row of fuzzy lumps hanging low in the sky. Rain doesn't fall from these clouds. Nimbostratus and cumulonimbus clouds both tell you there will be very wet or even stormy weather. Nimbo or nimbus in a cloud's name means it is a storm cloud. Nimbostratus clouds are dark gray and ragged looking at the bottom. Rain or snow falls steadily from them. The scariest clouds are cumulonimbus clouds. If you are standing under them, they will look dark gray instead of white. Sometimes they look almost black. They seem to swell as they climb higher and higher into the sky. If you see cumulonimbus clouds in the sky, you should run inside as fast as you can. They mean a thunderstorm is coming and thunderstorms can be dangerous. Sometimes balls of ice, called hail, fall from cumulonimbus clouds. Sometimes dangerous funnel-shaped tunnels of wind, called tornadoes, grow out of them. If there were no clouds, Earth would be a very different place. Clouds are important to everything that lives and grows here. They bring the rain all plants and animals need. If there were no clouds, there would be no rain. Nothing could live. If there were no clouds to hide the sun, earth would become very hot during the day and very cold during the night. The temperature change would be too much for most plants and animals to live and grow.
Sometimes you see more than one kind of cloud in different parts of the sky at the same time. That's because the wind is blowing away some clouds and bringing in new ones. This means the weather will change. Now that you know which clouds bring rain or snow, which bring storms and which bring sunny weather, you can tell in advance what the change will be. That's what scientists called meteorologists do. More than half of Earth is always covered with clouds, even though you may not see any where you live. But somewhere else on Earth, someone else is looking at clouds in the sky above. And that is the end of Clouds by Anne Rockwell, illustrated by Frené Lessig. The next poem I'm reading is called Clouds. When I was a little girl, I loved to lie in the grass and look up at the big blue sky and watch the big puffy white clouds float by. With a little imagination, I could see all different kinds of things in the clouds. So I hope you enjoy this poem, Clouds. Clouds by Robin Adams. Clouds can be white, clouds can be gray. Clouds are black on a stormy day. I like the white clouds, the big puffy kind. I lie down on the grass and see with my mind. An elephant dancing, a rabbit hops by. There's a snake and a fish. Can you give it a try? Do you see the big pig with a curly tail? A cat and a dog, an enormous white whale. There's a clown in the circus. He's selling balloons, a seahorse, a butterfly, a hairy baboon. But then the wind blows and they all melt away until spring brings another white puffy cloud day. The fourth and final book I'm reading today, boys and girls, is called It Looked Like Spilt Milk by Charles G. Shaw. All you have to have is a little imagination when you're looking at the clouds and you can see almost anything. Just like in this story, It Looked Like Spilt Milk. It Looked Like Spilt Milk by Charles G. Shaw. It Looked Like Spilt Milk by Charles G. Shaw, Scholastic Incorporated. Sometimes it looked like spilt milk, but it wasn't spilt milk. Sometimes it looked like a rabbit, but it wasn't a rabbit. Sometimes it looked like a bird, but it wasn't a bird. Sometimes it looked like a tree, but it wasn't a tree. Sometimes it looked like an ice cream cone, but it wasn't an ice cream cone. Sometimes it looked like a flower, but it wasn't a flower. Sometimes it looked like a pig, but it wasn't a pig. Sometimes it looked like a birthday cake, but it wasn't a birthday cake. Sometimes it looked like a sheep, but it wasn't a sheep. Sometimes it looked like a great horned owl, but it wasn't a great horned owl. Sometimes it looked like a mitten, but it wasn't a mitten. Sometimes it looked like a squirrel, but it wasn't a squirrel. Sometimes it looked like an angel, but it wasn't an angel.
Sometimes it looked like spilt milk, but it wasn't spilt milk. It was just a cloud in the sky. And that is the end of It Looked Like Spilt Milk by Charles G. Shaw. I've had a lot of fun with you today, boys and girls, reading stories and poems about wind and clouds. I've even managed to learn a few new things, and I hope you have too. It's just amazing to me how wonderfully God has made our world just perfect for us to live in and grow. If you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, you can do so. Just tap the word subscribe right there, and that way you'll be sure to get all the latest videos with stories and poems from Reading with Mrs. Adams. One truth I want you always to remember, boys and girls, is that God loves you so much. So dare to dream the impossible because all things are possible with God. I love you. Until next time, goodbye.